In this video, we are going to see what are the core concepts of Boto3 to work with AWS services, right? See, I'm going to show them. So you're having core concepts of uh, Boto3 for AWS services like a resource, client, meta, collections, paginators, waiters, and finally session. So these are the seven core concepts of your Boto3 to work with AWS services, right? See, let me explain them each and every one with the simple information. See, very first thing is resource, right? See, resource, it is a high level object to access AWS services. So if you want to work with any AWS service, first and foremost thing, you have to create one object. That object is either resource or client. But resource is high level object and client is low level object. So if you want to work with any AWS service, right? Like EC2 or S3, RDS, Lambda, whatever it may be. To work with any service of your AWS, the very first step in your code, you have to create either resource object or client object. But here, resource object is high level object and each and every operation with the resource is like a object operations. And you may not have all the operations with resource, right? But client is low level object. So here, whatever the operation you want to perform with your AWS service, that all operations are available with client. You can perform all your operations with client but here the client operations are like a dictionary operations. So if you want to work with client, you should be good with a dictionary operations, means how to get value based on key, how to see all the keys, how to get values. In case if there are multiple values for a single key, how to iterate, right? These operations you require if you want to work with client. Okay, so make sure that resource is high level object and here whatever the operation you are going to perform that is like your object operations means dot operations whereas in client the very first time you are going to perform your object operation because first you are going to create object after that you have to do manipulations like your dictionary operations right okay now you are having meta object See, just now we discussed that resource may not have all the operations to perform on AWS services. Sometimes you may have, for some services, you may have all our operations with your resource and sometimes you may not have some operations to perform with your particular AWS service. So at that time, to enter from resource to client, your meta object will be helpful. Suppose you started your code with resource and you found that there is some operation is missing in resource to work with your particular AWS service. Then at that time, you don't need to create client. Directly you can enter with your client. You can enter into client by using meta in your resource. So simply meta object is to enter into client object from your resource object. Okay, then session. So simply it stores configuration state and allows you to create AWS service resources, objects and client objects. Okay, so whenever if you want to create either resource or client, first thing you should get a session, right? So that session will allow you to create your AWS services either using resource or client objects. Right? Or simply, this is just object to get connected with particular AWS account or IAM user account. So if you want to connect with AWS root account, or if you want to connect with particular IAM user account, then the main key role is with session. So with the help of session only, you can connect with either AWS account root or any IAM user of your AWS account. So actually first step you have to do this from this you need to create your resource and client because it stores the configuration state 
session stores the configuration state so from here you are going to create resource and client okay then after that you are having collections so these collections are available with your resource object and it is a tool to iterate and manipulate group of resources so simply i can give one example just assume that you are having some uh, aws s3 service so in that you may have some number of buckets right now to go with one by one bucket from your resource object you need to use one operation called buckets so that it will create a iterator and from that iterator you can get one by one bucket from your aws account right okay then after that you are having paginators now it is just to uh, automate a paging of response simply automatic paging of responses so what it means just assume that guys uh, again in s3 bucket you are having some 2000 or 3000 objects by using your either resource or client with that object if you make some api call to fetch all your objects it won't give at a time all objects because maximum your boto3 api call will fetch 1000 objects so after 1000 objects because you are you are having in your bucket suppose 3000 objects you cannot fetch all those 3000 objects information with a single api call now at that time if you want to get all 3000 objects information first you need to create a paginator so paginator will create suppose uh, two pages here because you are having three of ob 3000 objects so in each call you will get suppose yeah suppose 1000 objects you are getting so you need to create a uh, paginator will create three pages and you can take one by one page and in each page you are having 1000 objects so that you can work with all objects in your particular bucket okay then finally you are having waiters so it is a way to block until a certain state has been reached simple thing waiters or uh, generally to use uh, suppose just assume that you are ha you are going to create one ec2 instance right we know that whenever if we launch ec2 instance uh, suddenly it won't come into running state at least it will take some fraction of seconds or to enter into to reach running state now you have a requirement after launching your ec2 instance once if it is reached to running state you need to uh, deploy something on your ec2 instance right so before going to deploy you have to wait up to your ec2 instance state is reached to running state right so through programmatic once if you launch and before going to deploy your something on your ec2 instance in between these two steps you need to wait but by default program won't wait so it will enter into it will execute line by line right any program right so between these two lines a launch step and deploying step you have to wait up to ec2 instance will uh, reach to running state so there your waiters are helpful so by including waiters concept in your code your waiters code will wait up to reaching certain state based on your requirement okay so guys uh, these are the core concepts of boto3 to work with aws services okay thank you for watching this video just do subscribe my channel so that you will get updates whenever we post some new videos if you like it just give your thumbs up on the below of this video and also share with your friends okay bye